Welcome to the, the first, first episode of Busting Ballsies. Today, I am here with a very charismatic and fun-spirited Twitch streamer, Donut. Donut, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm awake, so I can't complain about that. Nice. So, in this series, it's an interview show. I'm going to be interviewing many gamers, streamers, and YouTubes from YouTubers from across the globe. Uh, we will get to know these wonderful guests and also get their input on news in the gaming industry itself. So, outside of just what all they like to play, but also what they think about what's going on in the world. So, without a moment of delay, Donut, are you ready? I was born ready. Born ready. Alright, so first and foremost, why do you stream on Twitch? What about it keeps you coming back? I stream on Twitch because... I've been playing games since I can remember. I love playing video games, and more so than that, I love sharing my experiences with uh, friends, others. Um, so I feel the uh, sharing aspect, having other people with me, enjoying the fun moments, screaming, and the horror, horror, scary moments, and you know all the epic headshot, no scope, three hundred and sixty phase moments that happen. I love sharing that with uh, with my stream and having other people to be able to be able to enjoy those moments with me. Oh, that's so sweet. Do you have a lot of uh, 360 no-scope shots? No, but barely any, actually. But, but when they happen. <laughs> well, when they happen, it is epic. Uh, what games are you currently enjoying right now? Um, I've, I've always been into the horror uh, survival aspect types of games, but I do have a soft spot in my heart for the FPS um, competitive shooters, but recently I've been playing a lot of the um, you know survival sandbox horror games like The Forest, um, a new release called Hurt World, Daisy, Arma, games like that. Very nice. Um, I know you play a lot of PC games. Do you dabble in console gaming at all? Uh, recently, since I've started streaming, actually, not necessarily. Um, the last console game I played was Destiny. Uh, when it when it released before the expansions and before even way past then, uh, I was an old competitive player for Halo Two back in the day. But ever since I started streaming, um, I kind of veered away from the console gaming and uh, kind of honed in on the PC side of things. Interesting. I, I have my new PS4. Um, I do enjoy it, but I don't know. I still like streaming on the PC. It's kind of weird. Like I feel more. Yeah. I I just prefer it, I guess. <laughs> I feel I feel the same way. I think there's more customization and more user control with the PC. Right. Are you strictly keyboard and mouse, or do you have a controller on your PC? Um, pretty much strictly keyboard and mouse. I use a controller for very few games. I would say uh, Rocket League and the new Call of Duty I use a controller for, only because Rocket League was made to be used with a controller, and I've played all the other Call of Duties on my Xbox. So coming from the the latest Call of Duty onto the PC, I feel more at home using a controller for it. Interesting. Uh, do you plan on buying a... I don't know if you saw the new Xbox Elite controller, which I'm actually really wanting. Do you have any plans to buy that? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, really excited for that. I want it to release so I can see what's wrong with it first, and then I'm probably going to pick it up. <laughs> well, I've read, uh, interestingly enough, they actually had short supply of it because the demand was a lot higher than they thought. So I don't actually know when it's possible to get one, but my friend pre-ordered one and and brought it to our work uh, to show me what it's like. And it's really nice. It's really heavy, though, which is different. That's, that could be a good thing. That's cool. That sounds awesome. Some people really like that. I am I do and I don't. What? like bothered me the most is when you hold the controller your like back pinky and ring finger have triggers there and i wasn't used to that at all so that kind of freaked me out for a bit <laughs> yeah something you may have to get used to but probably more beneficial in the long run probably is there uh, any specific genre of game that you prefer to play be it on or off stream um I usually, like I said, I usually play survival sandbox horror type games, but off stream, I usually play those on stream. Off stream, I like to play a lot more of uh, the competitive uh, shooters um, myself. Competitive shooters. I, I noticed you were playing, uh, what, CSGO ranked mode the other day? Yes, yeah. Uh, that was on stream, actually, yeah. Uh, I love, I love Counter-Strike. I wish I was able to dedicate more time to, to it. I think I would be 
pretty good at it if I actually focus more time and effort to it. But um, yeah, I love, I love Counter Strike. I love all the uh, all those shooters: Rainbow Six, Call of Duty, Halo. Have you played the new Rainbow Six at all? Yeah, since Epic. I, I really enjoy it too. I just can't decide uh, if I want to buy it for my PlayStation or my PC. I'm kind of stuck in that that issue area. Yeah, it'd be a good choice either way. The The game is beautiful on the PS4 as well. I've played on the PC myself, and I still loved it. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to branch into a little segment just about the industry itself. I don't know how much news you read regarding what goes on in, in the wonderful gaming world we have and how it's blowing up and getting really, really important, you know, with getting Grammys being awarded to, like, video games themselves and stuff like that. It's really, really blowing up. Um, I don't know if you noticed recently we had the video game awards. Uh, I offered my opinions on a video before this, a very frank video, and we'll probably continue to offer my opinions, but I'm just curious on some things that, you know, I talked about, I want your input on. Um, right. First off, one of the categories they had this year was best mobile and handheld game. Do you play any uh, mobile handheld games? Uh, just uh, mobile games, nothing handheld, not anymore. I don't think most people do. Uh, what I thought was interesting was that they combined, you know, tablet and cell phone games with Nintendo DS and PS Vita games. Do you think that's very fair? Not necessarily. Um, I think I don't think that's fair to the PS Vita and the hand, the actual handheld games. It's not fair to them as in it's putting them in a lesser of a category of a quality. Whereas cell phone and mobile games obviously won't have the same quality of content that uh, these handheld systems will have because that's their sole purpose is making video games. And I also think it's unfair to the cell phone tablet games because obviously they're less inferior games. Granted, they may be awesome and super fun, but they have their, they're starting with a limp because they're going up against games that are fully functional games on a fully functional handheld gaming system. Right. What's also interesting is that a lot of mobile games nowadays are pay to win. And I think it's, kind of an issue when you put those together because handheld games you sometimes pay 40 to 60 bucks for whereas hand or mobile games are free but you have to pay to get the content that'll help you win and i think that's a pretty big distinction that needs to be made yeah i completely agree with that so another thing that bothered me is the winner for best soundtrack went to metal gear solid 5 metal gear solid 5 only had music that was licensed or you know, pre-made stuff that you find on like Spotify and whatnot and had no actual original music or or uh, symphonic music with it. Do you think it's fair to to award a game for borrowing music, essentially? Uh, no, no, I do not think that's fair. That's um completely wrong. Coming from a huge old school Halo player, um, which mm -hmm. the Halo 2 soundtrack was, was phenomenal and, you know, very talented, very talented uh you know, creator of that music, that music was made just for Halo, and the Halo was always stuck to that. And back then, that, I think that year, I think the year Halo Two came out, Halo Two won uh, the best soundtrack for the for soundtrack for the year. But I think having a, a game using music that was wasn't made for that game that that shouldn't be awarded. I don't think that should be even uh, allowed to enter the you know the category. Yeah, I feel the same way. Uh, Martin O'Donnell, I actually know his name because I, one, play music, but two, I pay attention to it. Um, his stuff's amazing, and he even wrote the uh, Destiny music. He had a hand in that, yep. which, yep. again, I think just sounds so, so impressive, and it's, you know, timeless in an essence. Uh, you, anybody could walk down the street, hear the first, you know, opening theme to Halo, and know within half a second what that's from and, you know, get memories from it. And I think that's important, but we don't get that too much from licensed music. Yeah, exactly. Mario O'Donnell is a genius when it comes to uh, making anything, just any game. And it's it's so f weird to have, you know, um, such a, like the Halo 2 theme song or the Halo theme song in general, the, it's not like, there's no guitar riffs. There's no drums. It's just like almost like ambient music. And just anybody who knows any kind of gaming hears that song for the first second, and they automatically know what what that's from and what that is, and they know they know exactly how the rest of the, the rest of the song goes, just because it's so timeless. And you're you're right. We, no one else gets that. Um, 
if you if you're using music that's just like you know say from a rock band or whatever right and i think that's kind of interesting that somebody mentioned i believe it was on polygon that if metal gear solid 5 could win best soundtrack with music you know from the 50s and 60s i think was that era that they went with that why can't Guitar Hero and Rock Band also be in the winning for those? Because that's essentially all they have is the same type of music that's licensed. And I thought that was a pretty interesting point too. Yeah, exactly. If if they if they're gonna not um allow Rock Band or games like Guitar Hero to get into that same category because of, because of that, then the games like Metal Gear Solid, which use one hundred percent licensed music, also shouldn't be in the running as well. I think. All right. Uh, I know you're a big fan of Rocket League because we've we've personally played a couple times now, I believe. Um, how do you feel about it being nominated for Best Multiplayer Game of the Year and possibly becoming an eSport game in 2016? Uh, it being nominated for the Best Multiplayer Game of the Year, I feel I feel like that's that's great. That's awesome. Um, I, I think that games like as a category like Best Multiplayer Game of the Year. The game doesn't have to be a, a crazy competitive game just to be in that category. Um, I think it's great that that game got into the category because it's such a simplistic idea, um, and people are having so much fun with it that I think it's awesome that they got into the, the category for best multiplayer of the game of the year. And becoming an eSport game, I'm kind of 50-50 with. Um, it's, again, it is a very simplistic game. It's always almost like you're like you're playing Super uh, or. Um, What's that uh, Mario game back from back in the day, the old N64? There were a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's like you're playing a mini game. It's like, you're like playing a mini uh, game. Mario Party. Mario Party. There we go. Wow. I'm a, I'm a fail gamer. Um, <laughs> it's okay, like I was never a fan. Mario... <laughs> it's like one of the Mario Party mini games almost at each game. It does, although it does take a lot of skill to be very good at it when it comes to like flying your car around the map and being very accurate and stuff like that. So I think it, it's a possibility that it can be an esport game. Um, but I do think some people in the esport community will be upset about it because it is less of a hardcore feel that everybody else is getting from like all the games that are competitive now, like, you know, like league and Dota and counter-strike and all that. They're more, you know, they're way more serious, I feel, than a game like playing soccer with cars, you know? Right. So on that same train of thought, just kind of breaking away from the awards, uh, I know personally that you can be a pretty competitive person at times. Are you a fan of any of the eSport games, such as StarCraft, Dota League, CSGO? Uh, there's numerous ones at this point. <laughs> yeah, um, I got into the uh, eSport area back back in 2005 2006 when i was like 15 or 16 years old with halo and um i actually went to a couple of the mlg major league gaming events um flown by plane to compete in halo 2 so ever since ever since then i've been very very in love with the whole competitive aspect of the gaming and how and where it's going um i'm a huge fan of it i'm i don't watch too much of like dota and league i'm not a big um I'm not a big fan of those kind of games personally, but games like like the RTSs, like StarCraft, back when StarCraft first launched, it was huge. Uh, and then all the shooters, of course, I love CSGO, uh, you know, Call of Duty, Halo. I've always kept up with them, and I always loved watching them and even partaking in them if I was able to. Nice. Uh, so personally, I plan on entering into some StarCraft and Heroes of the Storm tournaments going into 2016. It's one of my things on my kind of bucket list to do and that I really want to give it a try because America doesn't have really a strong presence in a lot of esport games right now which is unfortunate excluding CSGO um do you plan on doing anything similar or entering into a more competitive scene of gaming um I don't really plan on it I've kind of held handed that torch down myself um with you know now I'm a a father and a full-time worker and now a full-time streamer. I don't have a lot to dedicate to just focus on competitive gaming because this is a whole nother beast compared to streaming and just casual gaming. Uh, whereas you actually have to sit down by yourself or with your team and just sit there and play for hours and hours and get used to strategies and call outs and all that kind of stuff. I don't really think I have the time for that. I, if, if anything, I would probably like to get into more competitive CSGO tournaments, uh, like more online possibly and just, uh, you know, get better myself at Counter Strike and 
if if anything, of course, I don't plan on doing anything. But if I did manage to fall into a competitive scene, it would probably be Counter Strike right now. Cool. And what I like about a lot of these games is they have that ranked mode. So it kind of even if you play by yourself or get a team, you don't have to take it as seriously, but can still you know rank up, and that that makes you feel accomplished when you do. At least for me. <laughs> Yeah, the ranking system is always good to have for uh, any competitive game, for that matter. Uh, moving on to peripherals, a lot of companies, including Sony and Valve, are pushing hard in 2016 to get out virtual reality gaming. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I think, um, and I've, I've actually looked up a lot of the stuff with the virtual reality stuff coming out and all the stuff they already have, you know, with the Oculus Rift and all that. And um, I think it's really, it's really cool. But I also think it's not 100% practical or is going to be. I think for the casual gamer or the single player games, that kind of stuff, it would be amazing for like the horror game, Silent Hill, or like even like a Call of Duty campaign mode. But I think in the multiplayer aspect of things, I always think the controller or keyboard mouse user will have the advantage over somebody using a real life looking weight gun in their hands. Honestly, I don't think we have the technology yet to get it down to be as good as a keyboard and mouse. Um, but I am excited to see it, and I would love to have and try them out myself because I think they would still just be just fun, just as fun in general. Right. I think the biggest, the biggest thing that I look forward to in virtual reality gaming isn't exactly games in themselves. I, I, I've seen like multiple things on Steam that are like experiences, not necessarily games. Like there's one that uh, you just ride roller coasters on, or um, like like those type of rides, amusement park rides and such, which I think is really neat. Um, also, just a real quick note on price point. I know, like, Steam and Valve, they want to shoot for about two to 300 Oculus wants to shoot for about four, five dollars $500, last I heard. Um, do you think that, like, they're going to have to make it expensive, obviously. Do you think that's going to limit also the amount of games they can put out, knowing not everybody will be able to get their hands on these right away? I don't necessarily think that will limit the amount of games they could put out for it, because um, they're still going to be releasing what they want to release, because they are billion-dollar companies, but it will heavily limit the amount of people that buy it. I'm not saying it won't flop, um, because that is a really high price point, and... You know, even someone like me, I'm not, you know, I'm, I understand a lot of like younger kids and younger generations, they don't have money because they, they don't work or barely or work a, a small part time job. I, I, I'm not that kind of kid. I'm a older, I'm an adult now. I have a full time job, but I still can't even afford that kind of thing right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, <laughs> I think, I think it's, uh, the price point is up there. It is. And I mean, it's gotta be, it's gonna be really cool. It is gonna be really cool. It's a really cool thing to have, but it does limit their, their market of course you know everyone wants a ferrari but not many people could buy one it definitely does i think the biggest thing that'll be nice to come from it will be the independent developers that will get a shot to to make games for this because they already have that option because you can you know buy oculus rift the developers kit right now already and so i'm kind of excited to see what these big you know big money companies what the opposite side of that will be because i think there's a lot more experimenting and just having fun and using gaming as an art form and to see that in virtual reality kind of excites me more than just to see call of duty virtual reality yeah i think um the whole modding community and the um the you know the lower end community just the gamer community in general usually almost almost does a better job sometimes with uh some of the stuff i mean look at minecraft look at where that came from there's over like what a hundred thousand mods for minecraft and a yep. lot of them are way more popular than the actual vanilla game um as well as DayZ is one of the most popular sandbox stand survival games out there on the on steam and the desktop that, that Daisy started a tidal wave of sandbox survival zombie games, and Daisy was originally just a mod for Arma. Yep, it definitely did. And then you get a, you know, Gary's mod, which is, you can find an unbelievable amount of things in that that are user created. And I think it's nice that the Steam, or that the Steam Workshop exists because that allows anybody to go in and add just random content to games, and a lot of games offer that workshop capability now which is surprising 
yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what people are going to be doing. What can they what, what they can make for the uh, VR headsets and stuff like that. Are you uh, religious to any like one brand of peripheral? Like I I have a Razer keyboard and mouse. I have a Logitech mouse too, but I really like Razer's products. Um, do you have any that you're, you know, preferential to? I've actually um, just switched over right like right at this second. Um, I'm using a final mouse, the final mouse, uh, 2015, which was a newer mouse that was created last year. Um, which is a good mouse. I like it. And, uh, my, I just have a regular keyboard, but my headset, I just upgraded my headset, uh, to the Logitech G930 and the, after switching to the Logitech headset, I'm like amazed at the the quality of Logitech, uh, products and I'm going to be picking up actually later today I'm going to be picking up a uh, Logitech C920 uh, webcam and I'm probably going to be picking up a Logitech mechanical keyboard and a Logitech mouse later later this month so I'm going to be switching over to Logitech at, just because this headset specifically just completely converted me the headset is phenomenal in its in quality and uh, durability uh, sound quality, surround sound, noise cancellation, everything. This headset is amazing. This is the best headset I've ever had. So I'm switching full heartedly to Logitech within the next month. Interesting. I, I have the Logitech C, uh, I think it's the 920. It's 1080p webcam. It works better than any webcam I've ever had. So I definitely recommend jumping on that one. And I do have, I don't remember what number it is because they get kind of random in my opinion. But a six thumb button mouse from Logitech that works really good when I'm playing my MMOs and such. So I I'm really impressed with their lo where Logitech has come. Yeah, that really came a long ways. Um, I think nowadays like game uh, companies like Razer, uh, I mean they do have some great stuff, but I think you're paying more for the name anymore with companies like Razer or, or uh, Rocat um, compared to where a old older company like Logitech, which it used to used to just make regular keyboards and mouses just for the regular home computer. Now they're making this amazing, amazing equipment. That is that is definitely it, and and they still keep it uh, somewhat affordable without advertising. Because I I don't know, like it, you said, you don't watch esports much, but the esports are so heavily grounded in promotion. Like every gamer is sponsored by a graphics card company. Or something of that nature, which is almost kind of disgusting, but they use that to raise those prices on their products, and that's exactly what you're doing—is you're paying for that name. Yep, yeah, that's uh, it's been like that for a long time. Uh, ever since esports launched back in the day, Red Bull was like the number one, you know, sponsor for all esports gamers or MLG gamers. Was uh, it was Red Bull, and uh, when Turtle Beaches came out, Turtle Beaches yep. rode that they rode that thunder all the way up to the top, and. I mean, now they're starting to fall back down because there's so many more, you know, bigger and better brands out there that are actually more affordable than those, you know, name name brands that have that people wear on their shirts, you know? Yep. That's actually, that's what I came from with my headset. I just bought one of the new Razer Chroma headsets from the Turtle Beach. I don't remember which one it was, like the $80 one. And I like it so much better. Like our, our Best Buy has a whole display of Turtle Beach stuff. And I just don't care because this one works just as good, if not better, and it's a little bit more affordable. Yeah, that's awesome that, that uh, other companies can do that without having all that marketing power, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. So going into 2016, we're, we're recording this on New Year's Eve. Hopefully I get it up uh, promptly. But going into 2016, uh, what games are you looking forward to? I am mostly looking forward to updates for all the early access games that I am uh, I'm playing now. But there is one game that I'm looking forward to playing uh, 2016. It releases, I believe, in March. Uh, Tom Clancy's The Division. Yep. I cannot I cannot wait for that game because I think it puts the online multiplayer FPS slash MMO loot finding. Uh, you know, it, it puts all the great things from every other category of gaming together in one game, in a post-apocalyptic game nonetheless, which is my favorite. So I really cannot wait for that game to come out. Yeah, I was actually, the last, what was it, I believe, PAX East, or whichever PAX is earlier in the year, um, when they 
announced it and kind of gave us a trailer of it. It looked just so good, but it's been kind of like mysterious, I think. They haven't really spoiled too much of what's going to go on in this game yet. And I know the the closed alphas just barely started. I think the second week of them was this weekend. So it's I'm really interested to see what all that game is going to have. It sounds very different. Yeah, I like that too. I like that they've been real quiet about it, and they've only only really released a couple of trailers, like two or three trailers for the game, and uh, they're keeping it under wraps, which is I think is good. I, I want to know a lot more about it, but I also like the anticipation and the excitement of what I'll get into when I first get into it. I don't, a lot of the times I watch all these videos for these games coming out, and it's like when the game comes out, I already know how the first three levels of the game are because I've already watched them 14 times on YouTube. So um, the fact that this is going to be more of a fresh fresh game and i'm gonna pick it up and not i'm actually gonna have to look at the controls and look around and see my way around the game with before knowing it from youtube videos prior uh, i think that's exciting yeah i think that's my biggest problem with like i mean i think call of duty black ops 3 was one of the best we've seen in a while but it's my problem with the black ops and battlefield games and stuff of that nature um even the fallout games where they're at like number four is that you jump into the game, you already know what you're going to expect, you already pretty much know the control scheme, you already know what you're going to have to do, and it's just hopefully that there's a story in there that intrigues you enough. And I think it, I while I'm not opposed to that, I like these really fresh experiences that, that just blow you away. They stick with you a lot longer. Yeah, exactly. Um... It's it's hard to change a game, <clears throat> especially when you're on a, a series like Fallout 4. It's hard to change it so such that where it's completely new for the, the player because they still have to follow their same. It's still the same game, and they have to follow the same kind of, you know, stuff they were doing in the past games. But um, there is nothing wrong with what you know games like Destiny and Fallout and all that stuff that have that kind of feel to it. There's nothing wrong with it because it, it it works. If it's not if it's not broken, don't Absolutely. fix it. But but bringing in a new fresh type of gameplay to the genre is always super exciting not everybody can do that of course fallout 4 can't just go and make oh now now it's an rts you can't do that with fallout and you know it's just it's fallout's a shooter post-apocalyptic shooter but for other games to release a new titles that are different and fresh and that it really just it's like a, a cold splash in the face for all the gamers who've been playing the same kind of games for a long time i think uh far cry is actually trying to do that with primal I haven't looked at uh, Primal too much yet, but uh, I am a big fan of the old Far Cry series. I do like Far Cry. Um, I read somewhere, I believe this morning actually, that it's rated M for Mature, and it's going to be graphic and sexual, which is kind of interesting. So I think it's it's going to be something really, really new for them, which is exciting. I'm a little scared on what a Far Cry game is going to do with man-made tools and not guns and explosives, but you know. It'll be interesting. Yeah, it sounds real exciting. I've always liked the whole, uh, well, the primal, no pun intended, the primal feeling of the Far Cry, <laughs> Far Cry games um, and their, uh, you know, their, the way you make things and hunt and all that kind of stuff. I, I always like that. So I'm excited to see what they're going to do with it too. Yep. Um, I guess there's... A lot of different kind of games coming out, but I know you mentioned early access games. There's a lot of those that have been coming out recently. Um, do you pay attention to those a whole lot? Yeah, I try to um, dabble in early access as much as I can. Uh, games, you know, games like Hurt World just released, which is an awesome game. Uh, Squad actually just, I think, fully released. I'm not sure if they're early access anymore, but they did just release as well. Uh, which is an amazing, an amazing game, and uh, Albion Online is another one that I've I've been watching, uh, which is fun. But yeah, I, I try to keep up on. There's so many of them though; it's hard to keep keep tabs on all of them. I think it's really neat that uh, they they're allowing that now. Like I'm someone who I love beta testing games. I was lucky enough to get into the closed alpha for Doom just recently. I beta tested Destiny. Um, my friend did De uh, Halo 5. I think it's really cool that they give that opportunity, but to do early access kind of gives these more independent, smaller companies the chance to pay people to, to make their game better, I think is essentially what early access is best for. Yeah, I think that's great. I've I've been a, a part of a lot of the uh, beta testing as well, 
with uh, Star Wars and Rainbow Six. I was in the beta tests, and um, I, I think slowly, I think slowly the open and closed betas are going to be fading away, and early access might be like the next thing for all games. Possibly, it depends if the AAA uh, title game game titles want to do that. I'm not sure because you know. Again, they're going to be strict with what they want to do, but I think early access is awesome for indie developers to, you know, help develop help develop their games while still help funding their games too. Uh, games like uh, Rust or, or DayZ were the DayZ standalone, especially was almost 100% funded just from early access. Yep. Um, you know, people buying it, but I mean, I, of course, that could always come around and stab stab gamers in the back. Um, cause there have been a few developers who've just taken early access money and just stopped developing the game, which is a, the downside, but you, you're going to have that, you know? Yeah. Unfortunately you see that a lot, especially with uh, kickstarters, which is really unfortunate. These crowdfunding websites and stuff, a lot of that is unfortunately going on, but not much you can do. I know they usually aren't too expensive, luckily. And now that Steam has uh, finally a refund policy, I don't know what they're doing about that, but hopefully they're looking into that too. Yeah, it's always nice to be able to have um, some kind of safety net just in case something were to happen. Um, but again, it is an early access game, and if you are paying anything, um, hopefully you get at least get your, your money's worth out of it in the game. And uh, again, there is a disclaimer when you buy early access games that you are you know, risking playing a game that's not fully developed yet either yep i think that's the the biggest thing that i look for in the early access games like uh my favorite currently is uh just a single player game called subnautica but what's really great and what i like about it is they consistently push out updates all the time and so you know you know i paid 15 bucks for this game but they're adding stuff twice a month i'm almost getting more out of this game than i paid for really and I think that's fantastic. Yeah, when you have a developer who truly loves their game and wants their game to grow and do the, doing stuff like that, like I, I bought into Ark when it first uh, Arc, launched yep. early, early early access for it was like fifteen or twenty dollars when it first launched, and uh, they're releasing you know new dinosaurs almost every other week, every week new new features, new crafting, uh, you know new craftables all the time. They're releasing up, updates, and it's great. I think that's I think that's amazing, and. I've gotten well over the twenty or thirty. Even if it, if it was thirty, I would have bought Ark for sixty dollars if I knew I was gonna get this much time in it. Um, so to, for them to be able to do that, a developer, you know, they really love their game and they really have a passion for their game and they really want their game to grow. And that's that's good, always really good to know. It is. Uh, the, that actually brings up something that I want to mention real quick that I've been uh, talking to a lot of people about, and I've heard a lot of other others like uh, one of my favorite critics and reviewers total biscuit mention is going into 2016 a lot of people are shelling out these 60 dollar titles for just multiplayer games like battlefront and um i can't think of it siege i think is technically only multiplayer and there's kind of that gray area between how much money should we charge for a game where you're not getting a story you're not getting any you know content or character development any of that stuff and that's kind of interesting that you mentioned the early access games because like in arc and subnautica i've spent so many hours into those games just because they keep expanding it and keep making you want to come back whereas uh battlefront i haven't you know touched too much and they're also charging like an additional 30 40 bucks for the season pass which i think is just ridiculous yeah, there's a um, <clears throat> there's a line that's being drawn now in in the, the age we're in with gaming, where the triple A or the big manufacturers, the g big game title makers, need to understand um, that it's not f you know to they need to step away from the greed set por portion of it. Um, I, Destiny was like one of the first big turning points that like everybody opened their eyes. It was like, wait a second. Why am I buying this game for sixty dollars and then not getting any of the story and then getting having to pay thirty dollars for DLC as it comes out, which is the, telling me the story of the original game? It hmm. it's they they need to kind of pump the brakes. I think the AAA titles need to pump the brakes on that and get back to their roots and actually make the games 
for you know the players to enjoy, not just for them to make the the bank off of it. And you're exactly you're completely right. Um, you you paid sixty dollars for Star Wars. I I did as well for Star Wars Battlefront, and we get the same what three or four maps and two game types. For there, there's a couple the f- game types. My problem is almost all of the maps are and all of the game modes that you get which is, you know, a way for them to get out of making more stuff, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. And they haven't really released much. And if they, when they will, they're going to release new maps, and it's going to cost more money. Yeah, and the one that they did release, the Battle of Jakku, you had to, like, pre-order or get the special edition or some BS like that, which doesn't help either. <laughs> exactly. I, I just think, I think they... We're getting real close to the tipping point with the AAA companies to where it's, it's very obvious that a lot of them are just trying to milk money out of the gamers, the gaming community, which is a very big problem. And uh, that needs to be addressed with them and their, their, you know, their CEOs and all that stuff to take it down a notch and just bring it back to the where, you know, we're, just, we're all just trying to have fun and play video games, you know? I think that's where, uh, I mean, I'm a big Blizzard fan. The only game I haven't played a Blizzard is WoW, but I still love the the story and lore so incredibly much. But uh, Blizzard's new game, Overwatch, is going to be 40 bucks. All the characters are unlocked, are free. They're going to release new characters, I think they said one or two every month or two, and those are all going to be free. And so I think when we see Overwatch launch finally, we're going to see those other companies go, oh shit, we've been messing this up, because I know Overwatch got so much press, so many people who got to play, you know, that beta that came out for a couple weeks, that's all I heard from a lot of people for a week, is how amazing that game is, and I think when that attracts so many people, because it's so affordable, and they're getting so much without having to spend more money, the other companies are going to be a little bit afraid, I think. Yeah, Blizzard's always always been a flagstaff for the creating great games and um, not trying to abuse its its uh, you know gamers its uh, community. And um, Overwatch was a perfect example of that. It was it, it, I didn't play the beta. The, the, I wasn't able to play the beta, but I did already purchase the game, and I'm super excited. I watched a ton of footage from the from that game, and that game looks super fun. That game is definitely going to be an esports game. Uh, guaranteed. I, I don't have a doubt in my mind that this is not going to make any kind of esports title. Uh, that game is going to be very fun, very competitive, and very affordable, which is what we all want as gamers. Right. That's nowadays. That's almost what we can hope for. Is that a game or yeah. something's affordable? <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, so go ahead and plug. All of your stuff. Uh, I know you stream a whole bunch. You do have a uh, YouTube, so if you want to give everybody your credentials to find you, yeah. Um, if my uh, my Twitch is twitch.tv l o underscore donut d o n u t underscore o l, and uh, my YouTube channel is exactly the same. Uh, if you just search l o donut o l on YouTube, you can find me up and. Uh, I'll be on there as well. I stream Tuesday through Friday, 9 Eastern Standard Time in the morning until around 3, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Perfect. Well, that's all for today's episode of Busting Ballsies. I truly hope you all enjoyed, and I look forward to reading your comments down below. Mr. Donut, thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a good time. Of course I did. Good, good. To all my viewers, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.